our, our wonderful attendees uh, here and as I was just chatting earlier, uh, we've got people who've been on Christmas bird counts for maybe years and years and some folks who just started uh, this past year. But we've got a really, really exciting evening with some really nice photographs. And I'm Nancy Howell. I'm the compiler for the Lakewood Circle Christmas Bird Count. And I've been the compiler for a bunch of years. And what that means is all the data that, that uh, all of you have uh, sent in uh, is compiled by me. And I've got to enter it into the National Audubon Society site, website, including the species, the numbers, um, everybody's name and email address, uh, weather conditions, how many hours everybody was out. So that's why all of that stuff on those checklists needed to be sent in because I got to take it all in and um, throw it up in the air and see what all comes together. No, actually, I, I do a, a, you know, it's kind of fun uh, getting all this data in and then it's like opening up a Christmas present as, as the checklists are coming in because it's like, oh, these people had this many of this species and oh, another thing has been seen. So I'm hoping this evening we can make it a little bit interactive. I would like uh, folks who uh, have participated to join in. I might, I might be asking uh, some questions of folks. And, uh, you know, like, um, you know, is this the first time you've been on a Christmas bird count? What did you enjoy about it? And it was really nice this year that we did have some snow on the ground. Uh, you know, there's been some, some uh, Christmas counts that have been, uh, you know, less than Christmassy. So I think we're, we're really going to get uh, rolling here. Again, we've got uh, a nice group of attendees. Uh, so uh, Betsy's going to run the slides except for the checklist that's going to come up. Uh, a little bit later on. Beth, you're going to have to remind me where we're, we're going to tuck the checklist in, okay? All right, so you want to move to the next slide there, Betsy? All right, so really for this year, we did a couple of things since we couldn't meet ahead of time, uh, which we never did before. We said, hey, why not have a, a, a kickoff? So on Monday, December 7th, we had a, a, a virtual meeting, a virtual kickoff. They kind of went over uh, the how-tos, the you know, how to fill out the checklist, what information is going to be needed. And so that was wonderful. And you can watch that again if you'd like. The video is up. Um, we did a, a Christmas bird uh, count ID, bird ID, uh, so that some of the tougher species, uh, the difference between a house finch and a purple finch, or a uh, female uh, house finch and pine siskin, and a few other species that sometimes are a little more difficult to, to discern, uh, that was a lot of fun as well, too. And, um, you know, it can be used at other times, so go ahead and check that out. That's up on our, our video feed. Of course, the actual Christmas count date was Sunday, December 27th, and we had folks out uh, early in the morning uh, until about, I think our latest group kind of rolled in at about mm, 4.45, something like that. So uh, again, and then there were some folks that went out and, and did some owling really early in the morning. And so then tonight we have our wrap-up. So, and this should be, this is, again, being recorded, so it will be out on, on the video feed, um, and uh, you can take a look at it at another time, or if you want to, uh, if you weren't able to see it, and let, maybe let other people come and take a look at it, again, they can see it as well, too. All right, Betsy, next slide. And, of course, we had a beautiful day for the Christmas count. Uh, Uh, this was one of the few days that started off with a little bit of sun. So we had a beautiful sunrise in Rocky River Reservation. Um, Sean Missig uh, provided this, this lovely photo. And look at the snow on the ground. It's definitely a Christmas count. Uh, next slide, I think, is also another beautiful, beautiful sunrise. Next slide, please. There we are, another sunrise. Uh, at one of the cemeteries, West Park Cemetery, 
and uh, provided by Marianne Romito. Looks very, very, very Christmassy there. And really, cemeteries are very good places for birding. Um, first of all, it's quiet. Uh, secondly, lots of times there's a diversity of plant life in a cemetery. And, um, and so, again, they're really nice places that you can walk around. Uh, next slide. Uh, just to refresh memories, there's our circle uh, of our Lakewood, uh, or the circle of the Lakewood Christmas bird count. Um, it's, it's not exactly, the, the center point is not exactly in Lakewood, but Lakewood is, I guess, the name given to the circle. And it really takes in a lot of the uh, shoreline of Lake Erie. Um, it does slop over a little bit into Lorain County. It goes all the way down to about the Strongsville border. And I, and I keep saying, one year we've got to get somebody out on a boat into Lake Erie and get all the, the gulls and other waterfowl that might be out there. And some of you probably remember that years ago the lake pretty much would freeze by Christmas bird count time and nowadays uh, we're not getting that freeze that we that we uh, that we anticipate so all right next slide and uh, the little the little blue uh, pins are our areas that are covered during our Christmas bird count um, some, sometimes the pit, some of those uh, routes are missed, you know, with people getting sick and, or we just don't have enough people. This year we had uh, 86 participants for the Christmas bird count. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> and yes, one of the routes takes place at the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo. And uh, I have not a clue as to um, you know, what they were checking out here, but obviously the, the zoo was still decorated for the, um, the uh, not the boo at the zoo, the whatever they call their, their Christmas event, their holiday lights. And, um, and so the, our crew was able to check out the zoo and the waterfowl pond and some of the plantings there too. No, we did not put down flamingos. No, we didn't put down ostriches on our checklist. Uh, but uh, we, have, we usually did get the zoo and also the surrounding area, the Brookside Park. Uh, so, so this was, looks like a lot of fun. Next, please. Uh, another one of the routes is along Lake Erie, and there actually are several places where the folks along Lake Erie stop. We have a eastern kind of route along Lake Erie, and then we have a western route along Lake Erie because that that shoreline is so so large that um, that we really need to cover um, a, a lot of spaces or a lot of places there. And uh, Anna Koglenko provided this nice shot. I think it shows very typical of what uh, the Christmas counters do have to do for a long And now delay. I hear Nancy. And uh, oh, and so they you know they get out, they scan the lake. But you can see that lake is wide open, so I tell you, it's kind of kind of tough to see some of those species. I don't know how rough or smooth the lake was this year. Maybe uh, um, Paula, uh, do you have a, a minute to say how, what was the lake like this year, uh, as far as waves and wind and stuff like that? Oh, maybe Paula can't. Um, how about uh, Anna? Are you on? You can unmute and, and chat a little bit about the lake. Oh, just not. All righty. Well, we'll just keep going on. Let's see what else is in the next slide. And this is the crew that I worked with. Um, this is part of the, uh, the Big Creek Metro Parks or Big Creek Reservation. Um, this is the Snow Road Picnic Area. And um, Rich Kasuf is on the far right. He's been on our Christmas counts for a long time. Um, and uh, so we take the route from 
uh, Snow Road picnic area along Big Creek Parkway, head on up to Brook Park Road, uh, do a little bit of shopping at Walmart, I mean, um, check out the stuff that, uh, that's along Brook Park, head down to Stump Road, and, uh, and you know, we can, uh, again, a lot of the stuff is very um, suburban, but it's just really nice, we get some really nice surprises sometimes. All right, next slide. So just a real quick, the next couple slides show the areas that we do cover uh, or were covered this year. Again, Big Creek Reservation all the way from Memphis Avenue south to Falls Road. So that's a really nice long green corridor. Um, to the west, a little bit to the west, the Bradley Woods uh, area, some parks and uh, golf courses in that western portion of the circle. Uh, in Berea, there's the community lake called Coe Lake. I already talked about the Cleveland Lakefront and that extensive area that's covered. Um, a lot of parks, again, talk about just neighborhood parks and cemeteries. So Elmwood and Clay Parks and Lakewood Park Cemetery. This year, we really encourage some new birders to watch feeders and just to walk around uh, neighborhood areas because so much of our circle is suburban and neighborhoods. So uh, we have several feeder watchers. We have people walking through neighborhoods as well, too. Uh, the former American Greetings property, Holy Cross Cemetery, Hopkins Airport. Shocking, you would never think an airport be that birdie, but um, the, the airport being wide open and some of the surrounding areas are really, really, really good for, uh, for, some, for certain species. Uh, things like snowy owls, sorry, no snowy owl at the airport this year, but there were a couple of other things that, uh, that uh, showed up. Next slide. Yep, Huntington Reservation, again along the lake. Uh, lake I Isaac and Byers Pond, uh, Main Street Fields and Woodvale Cemetery. Again, that's pretty much at our southern end of our, uh, our circle, or southern part of our circle. Uh, the Lake to Lake Trail, we've hit from Bagley Road to Lake Isaac. If you haven't done that Lake to Lake Trail, it's really, really very, very nice. Uh, hit some of the wetlands that um, were glacier, glacial uh, uh, remnants. Um, Mill Stream Run Reservation was from Eastland Road to Bagley Road, so it included the Baldwin and Wallace Lakes area. As I mentioned, neighborhoods, so there were four uh, neighborhood areas that were covered pretty extensively. Puritus Wetlands. Uh, was really nice that uh, folks from the Renaissance Retirement Community, uh, they have a nature club and they were able to walk their property, watch some feeders. So that was, that was really a nice uh, addition. Uh, Rocky River Reservation, oh again, trails around the nature center uh, and Lewis Road Riding Ring are two uh, important areas that are covered uh, extensively. All right, next slide. Of course, the golf courses in the Rocky River Reservation, Big Met, Little Met, and Mastic Woods. Uh, I have a young lady who does the St. Joseph Academy property, which is just above the Rocky River Valley. Um, the southwestern area of the circle, the Olmsted Falls Township and, and, uh, and Berea, and even into Lorain County, basically it's following um, uh, the Ohio Turnpike right in that area. That again is our very, very southwestern portion. And it's unfortunately it's growing up into suburbia. Uh, used to be a lot more um, greenhouses and open uh, uh, areas, but, uh, but there's power line corridors, there's again some suburban areas, there's some golf courses. So again, can really provide some nice habitats and some different species. Uh, Sunset Memorial Cemetery and uh, a couple of other parks and cemeteries. Uh, Valley Parkway all the way from the mouth of the Rocky River south to Bagley Road. So again, a really, really long green corridor. 
Ah, the Tri-C campus, uh, Western campus in Parma and Parma Heights. Uh, sometimes is slow, but this year we got some goodies. And West Park Cemetery. And I did mention the zoo and Brookside Reservation. So, so again, just a lot of neat areas that we have in our count circle. Let's uh, take a look at the next slide, please. So real quickly, um, this slide, can you see it? Can you see it? Look in that little hole. Yeah, so so this one is a little screech owl that was in a tree cavity, a sycamore tree cavity in the Rocky River Reservation. Now I tossed this in there not so much that we are trying to look for that, that screech owl, although I can barely see something in there, but just how important looking in little cavities in trees um, you know and, and sycamores are really good because a lot of times they have uh, they can be hollow inside and so can provide a really nice little roost area for well it couldn't just be owls it could be woodpeckers uh, wood ducks like to nest in the tree cavities of, of um, sycamores because sycamores tend to grow along river areas or wet areas um, but you'll also see squirrels poking their heads out too. But it's just so important to, as you're walking around to notice the, the little openings in trees and cavities. Maybe it's chewed, maybe it's pecked on. And so uh, again, paying really close attention to little things like that. But yes, there's a little screech owl in there. So yay, that was nice because it was the only screech owl that we had on our count. And next slide please. Whoa, check that out. This was at one of the um, parks, Elmwood Park, um, and um, I think it's in, oh, I don't know if it's Lakewood, I can't remember where Elmwood Park is, but look at that. Rocky River. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that's one of them I did. <laughs> oh, that's right. Here, Joanne, thank you so much for, for joining it. Yeah, look at that gorgeous, gorgeous great horned owl. Fabulous, fabulous. I went out owling in the morning and tried to hoot up a great horned owl. No, but about a week later, one was hooting in my neighborhood. So go figure. That's just the way it happens. All right, let's go to the next slide. Look at this. We had several barred owls on the count. Uh, some out, uh, some uh, counted during the uh, uh, owling, and. Some that wanted to be seen during the day. So look at this beautiful photo by Michelle Brocious of the uh, barred owl in Rocky River. So uh, isn't that isn't that wonderful? Yeah, I like that. All right, next slide. So a little bit of history. Um, Western Cuyahoga became a chapter of National Audubon in '75, and that was also the first year that uh, the Western Cuyahoga sponsored a Christmas bird count. Now you'll notice even though it says 1975 it's the 76th CBC. So the CBC's are a year older because when the first CB Christmas bird count started I guess it was considered year one and I can't remember the, the, the year that was. I wasn't born yet because that was over uh, that was 121 years ago. So no I was not born yet. Um, and uh, so this year, 2020, was the 121st CBC, which all in all is 45 years of CBC data from this Lakewood circle. That's, that's a lot. That's quite a few. Now some circles have much, much, much more data. They've been, they've been in, uh, in, uh, uh, counted for, for years longer than ours have. Um, I wish I knew all the compilers for the Lakewood uh, Circle uh, before Don Altimus. I do not know and I have to look that up in the uh, National Audubon CBC database. Um, the, it's not very well documented so I'm going to have to do a little bit of digging. So Don Altimus, maybe some of you remember Don as a naturalist in the Cleveland Metro Parks. Uh, and then, of course, myself taking it over from Don. Next slide, please. 
So the first count in 75 had 35 participants. Uh, the lowest number of participants was uh, was eight. Were only 18 people participated in 1987, and I was trying to figure why so few in 87. I I, I can't remember. I'm trying to think if I was even in town at that time. So so I don't know why. The highest number of participants was just last year. On, on this count, and there were 98 people that participated. So that was that was fun. The lowest species count uh, were only 56 species, and that was in 1990. And so far, um, the highest count we've had was was eight, were 83 species, and that was uh, in uh, 2013. Uh, but again, the data that National Audubon has from 1975 to 1989 there's not a total number of species listed so again why it's not there I don't know so I'm going to have to like I say do a bit of mining and get onto that site and see how I can find out how many species we're seeing from uh, on, from 1975 uh, through the years through 1989 just not there. All right, next slide. Coldest temperature, 1989, low of seven degrees, and the high was eight degrees, or uh, seven degrees below zero, and the high was eight degrees. Boy, don't you wish we had that that Sunday? No, no, no. We don't want to be out in quite that cold. I'll bet Lake Erie was frozen then. And the warmest temperatures, well, uh, 84 had a low of 50 degrees with a high of 63, and 96 a low of 54 and a high of 60. So, so again, there was some pretty spring-like weather in, in a couple of those counts. And uh, unfortunately, most of the Christmas counts were done under cloudy to mostly cloudy skies, not many sunny days. So it was really pretty nice that we had a sunny day for our uh, Christmas count for this year, or, uh, oop, nope, I should say last year, the 121st. And over those 44 years, not that's not including this year, 145 species have been tallied in this circle. So will more species be added this year? We'll see. All right, next slide, please. Well, you know what? We did add some species. Um, now, if you take a look at these two birds, um, you see the, the bird above is a little smaller, a lot, actually a lot smaller than the bird below. Uh, so cackling goose, we don't get those on our counts very often. Um, just a couple years, we've had cackling goose, which is a, a very, very small, about mallard size, like the the the, the mini me of, of the Canada goose. Anna Kozlenko got this wonderful photo along Lake Erie. Uh, next, please. Next slide. Can you pick the duck out in uh, that's uh, different from the others? Yep, the uh, harlequin duck is right in the pretty much smack in the middle of all those uh, golden eye, um, common golden eye, which are the dark and light birds. But the harlequin duck, much a beautiful, beautiful male harlequin duck. They're a kind of a, a deep, um, kind of a steely blue color. They've got some rust on them, some white, uh, just beautiful markings on them. So right right in that middle of that cluster of common golden eye. Not a new bird. We've had um, uh, harlequin ducks before, but uh, you know, usually one, another one. Yeah, they're so not unusual. Right? How about the next slide, please? Yay! First for our count, the black-headed gull. Yay! Um, well, you might say, well, this skull doesn't have a black head. Well, it's in its winter plumage. Um, if you're familiar with 
Bonaparte's gulls, if you're down by the lake. The black-headed gull is kind of a, a close cousin to the Bonaparte's gull. During the breeding season, they do get a black head. The thing is, black-headed gulls are, are European species. So this, this one decided to be with its buds, its cousins there along Lake Erie with all the Bonapartes, and it was, it was uh, sighted uh, in our count circle. So this is a lovely photo by Lenore. It does have a red beak, which is different from the Bonaparte skull. It also has red legs, but Bonaparte have red legs too. And you might notice that leading edge of the wings is bright white. So when in flight, you see a, group, a nice big old white uh, stripe along the leading edge of the wings. So black-headed gull, take a look at that one uh, in your some field guides or look it up online just to see how much. Uh, it looks very much like the Bonaparte skull, so finding that was good. Next, please. <gasps> Yay! Another first for our Christmas bird count circle. Black vultures. Check those out. They've been hanging around out um, around. Uh, well, these might be the ones that are ha had been hanging around around Brexville. But they decided to come a little closer and join us in our circle. Um, the Tri-C West Campus, and there's a church across the street called Holy Family Church. And these two birds, along with uh, many, many turkey vultures, uh, are hanging around this year. So, um, so how do you know a turkey vulture from a black vulture? Well, check out the heads on these birds. They're black. Turkey vultures would have red heads. Uh, the beak on black vultures is thin, whereas on a turkey vulture it's a little bit bulkier, and turkey vulture beaks are kind of an ivory color, kind of almost whitish. But I'm glad the one bird here has its wing extended because you notice that the silvery primary feathers, those, those long flight feathers, they're very whitish or silvery underneath. And um, in flight, you can see that, whereas on a turkey vulture, all those wing feathers from the, the, those primaries along the whole uh, back edge of the wing, which are all the secondaries, would be silvery. But on the black vultures, it's, it's those uh, primary feathers. So, yay! I don't know how they're keeping their heads warm. I think we have to knit them some little, little caps to put on. Um, hopefully, they're doing well. People are still seeing them in the area, so yay. All right, next slide. Um, not unusual, but it's one of the eruptive winter finches, one of the finches that has come down from the north. And a uh, common red pole were sighted, which is nice. It looks like there's a couple of birds there in the shot, the one in the middle, and then one a little bit more to the right. Um, by the way, they're hanging on to the little cones of alder bush, of alder trees. And so they'll t tuck their little beaks in and get those little seeds from between those little uh, parts of that cone. It's not like a pine cone, but it does look like a little pine cone. So uh, if you see alder shrubs or alder bushes, um, you know, look for not only red poles, but pine siskin. American goldfinch too. This is a lovely shot. Next photo, please. Well, again, not an unusual species, but but not seen very often. A beautiful field sparrow, um, and I'll tell you, I I go around Lake Isaac a lot, and I do not see these around a lot in the winter time. So this was a a really nice shot of the, the field sparrow. Uh, you notice the white eye ring, and you notice the bill is pink. So those are two diagnostic characteristics of, uh, of the field sparrow. So really good find. And do we have another uh, photo or two? Next, please. Turkey vultures. So um, I was—I don't think this one was at Woodvale. It might have been. Yes, it was at Woodvale Cemetery. Um, so lots of people did have turkey vultures. 
uh, on their on their routes, uh, whether they were the same birds or I think we got a, a, quite a few of them. We're going to pull up our checklist here in a minute. Um, we got quite a few turkey vultures, so they were really enjoying the weather. Oh, and look at notice the again the silvery uh, under the wings here. All those long feathers for flight, the primary feathers along the tips as well as the secondary feathers along the, again, the trailing edge, all silvery, whereas on the black vulture, it's only the, that, uh, those primary feathers that you see that silvery under, underneath. Uh, next. Mockingbird, not unusual, but it's really nice to see them, and their numbers seem to be increasing. Uh, they've been sighted uh, we're in se on several routes, so this is this was a nice shot. I like mockingbirds. Next, please. Bluebirds, not unusual, but they're just beautiful. Uh, so I, I really appreciate this lovely shot of the, the eastern bluebird. And that was in Rocky River. And I know several other routes had bluebirds, too. Um, I think, is there another photo, Betsy? Oh, yeah. This one, Cooper's Hawk, actually had caught up some prey. And um, the bird uh, was stood long enough for uh, Toby to get a, a nice shot of that Cooper's Hawk. And that's an adult bird. You see the, the slaty gray back, the bright red eye. Um, I think it had a morning dove for a meal. So, but everything God has to eat. All right. Is there another photo there, Betsy? No, I'm going. No. To okay. Do okay. What I'd like to what I'd like to do before I pull up my um, my checklist is I'd like to um, have some of our our folks who are uh, on the the uh, attending uh, to talk a little bit about their experience with the with the Christmas count and so that means you'll have to unmute your microphone um, and I just want to talk with some of the folks who maybe joined us for the very very first time. So maybe, uh, let's see, who do I want to call up here? Um, uh, Jason and Laura, would you want to let us know, little, know a little bit about your route and, and how you, you know, how you enjoyed it, or maybe you didn't? Uh, sure, so this is uh, Jason here. Um, this was our uh, first uh, Christmas bird count, and I'm going to, turn it over to Laura here in just a second, but Nancy, I just want to say thank you to you. You were great at keeping us organized and helping explain things um, and just gave us a lot of support. And so for our first experience, it was just awesome having you uh, guide us through it. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, so as our first bird count, oh my goodness, our route was Tri C West in Parma and then Holy Family Church right across the street right there. And we're, we're not familiar with Parma at all. We're up in Lakewood ourselves. And um, we went out a couple days earlier to just scout it out. And we actually, like, made a map and printed, like, a route. Like, cause we, to get there, like, you know, Google can get you there. But, like, we, we planned, like, okay, look at this, right? And... Where are the side effects? Where do we strategize to park? And what do we, what do we, what do we, expect? how long we should expect to be walking? Down? Well, then Christmas Eve came, and then you know two feet of snow came, so that completely changed. We were a little, you know, like, what if they're not even plowed out? It's a holiday on a weekend, and you know, what if we can't even? So uh, it was still a surprise uh, with with the space. It was really still. A, we were out for three hours in the twenty degree weather we were the early birds that day and it was just the snow had transformed even our expectations that we were planning for so uh but we had a great i mean you, you just got to wear the right clothes and uh we we had a great experience with this uh first time through 
Well, we hope you can join us for many, many, many more. But, you know, you brought up a good point about the weather. You wouldn't know how much I agonize over the weather. You know, I, you know they give you this eight-day forecast, you know, on the, on the news, and you're like, oh, good, it looks like it's going to be good. And then as you get closer and closer, they say this or that or the other thing. And, you know, one of my worst nightmares is, like having a super blizzard where it's I got to call everybody and cancel because nobody can move anywhere. Uh, so we've never had that happen, knocking on wood here. But uh, we, you know, we've had rain, we've had good weather, we've had snow. But uh, yeah, this, this year was, you, you hit a good year. Thanks. Um, let's see, uh, how about... Um, uh, Sean, Sean Missig, are you available to talk? Oh, maybe not. Maybe he walked away. Uh, how about Nick, Nick Flanick? I think this might have been your first count, too. Is that correct? Yes. Hello. Hi. Yeah, so, so, so what area did you cover and, and uh, you know, how did you feel about that experience? So I covered uh, the Lake Isaac, the Lake Isaac Trail included, um, the Woodville Cemetery, Byers Pond, and then the Main Street. I was actually very uh, surprised on the amount of species I've seen. I think it was because of the, how the sun came out halfway through the day and the big uh, area cut for the power lines really provided a great, uh, I think, hunting area for the raptors because I've seen a lot of raptors that day. And, um, yeah. How was the walk around Lake Isaac, the, ba the back uh, trail? Was was it pretty rough to get around? Um, it was pretty padded down. I think there's there was actually a lot of people there that day, too, because I was there the majority of the day because it was the bigger area to cover. And it wasn't terrible. It was pretty padded down, but... Once it started getting sunny, I was kind of got a little slippery, but mm -hmm. that's right. I got to see two barred owls go through the morning, so that was cool. There you go. I, I, I miss those all the time, and that's one of my areas that's really close to where I live, and so I am so glad you were able to get those there. That was that was awesome. Yeah, and that's also where I got the uh, common red poles is because they were feeding throughout the field with a... Uh, there's a bunch of house finches there earlier, and then like two common red poles and the gold finch came. And so I think the that that area where the power lines cut through, I think, provides a good kind of separation habitat for the woods. Yeah, exactly. So again, the diversity of habitat provides a diversity of bird life, which is again what what our count circle has. We've got lakes, we've got forests, we've got fields, we've got neighborhoods, we've got cityscapes. Um, hey, it's so, you know, sometimes people, I've had people say, oh, yeah, I don't even know if I want to participate, it's so suburban, you know, it's, but it's just wonderful. So this is, this really makes uh, an interesting count as compared with, say, something like way out in the country. Uh, uh, Nancy Valenti, um, are you available to chat a little bit about your route? All right, uh, Michelle, Michelle Brocious, you did uh, trails around Rocky River, is that correct? Yes. Oh, no. Okay. Yes, I did. I'm here. Cool. And, and how many folks did you have on in your uh, group? Uh, I had uh, five people, including myself. Um, as Sean and Cindy are here tonight. I saw them in the participants list. I don't think Dave and Allison have joined. Okay. Okay. And you took that lovely photo of the barred owl. Yes, Dave and, found and, that for and, us. And we were yeah. about to leave. We were about to, we, we were wrapping up, and we were in the parking lot about to leave, and uh, it it flew in, and so Dave saw it fly in, and he called. You know, I think there was a hawk. Yes, he just you know saw it really quick. And he, he looked at it and he was like, no, that's a barn owl. So we, we really got it at the last second that we were there. It was, and right. of course, we stayed for 10 minutes gawking at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, see, that's what makes things special. You just never know what's going to show up. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy that. That was wonderful. And again, you're, you're by the way, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna tout Michelle's photography skills. Yeah, fabulous. She, and Thank and you. one of my one of my favorite birds in the winter time are are, uh, are American robins, and she's gotten some gorgeous pictures of American robins. Just keep sending them to me, please. <laughs> yeah, Thank so you. They're wonderful. Um, uh, Joanne Kubicki, are you still available? Yes, okay. I'm here. Oh, okay. Now Joanne and her crew, they've been doing this for many years. So, anything special you want to share with some of us newbies, or or some of the things that you've had over the years, or something that's a little unique? What what areas did you cover, by the way? Um, Elmwood Park, um, the Lakewood Park Cemetery, and um, Clegg Park. Um, it was pretty slow this year, actually. And I don't think we would have saw the um, great horned owl if Marion wouldn't have tripped over a hidden log and fallen in the snow um, while she was cleaning off her shelf and her binoculars. I um, heard a bunch, a bunch of uh, blue jays scolding and calling, and I looked up and there was the great horned owl, and we must have walked right under the tree that he was in because it, he was like right over the path you know, that we walked past just uh, five minutes ago. Wow. So um, we were able to get get a good shot of it. I mean, she, he was still pretty far away, so Marion's camera brought, got a really good shot of it. Yeah. Um, so that was our Wonderful. excitement, that we thought the cemetery was going to be a lot more, uh, more birds there. Um, normally we get um, the, the red poles, and we didn't get any of those. So the cemetery was pretty quiet, but the snow was pretty deep too, so yeah, it's yeah. hard walking around. Oh, they hadn't had um, plowed yet? or No, the roads were plowed, but we usually walk um, closer uh, um, by the woods and stuff, and it was hard getting through there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To note That's on that, it. Wo Woodville Cemetery oh. was also kind of quiet. Yeah, so that's interesting. The snow, the, the small amount of snow that covered the ground maybe didn't uh, give enough grass or something, because I noticed that Woodville was slow. Okay. You know, when I've gone through a few of the cemeteries, you know, I was hoping that some of the, the pines and spruces that, you know, are mature in cemeteries and having a lot of cones would, would uh, attract some of the winter finches, but I haven't seen a whole lot of cones on uh, uh, our local pines and spruces, so... Hmm. Yeah. So did we just again catch as catch can. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, everybody. Um just trying oh, Marianne Romito. Marianne. Are you there? Yep, Number here 20. I am. Yay. Here. Yeah. And what route do you take? I do well we we went owling, ha ha, in the morning at the West Park Cemetery. We didn't get any owls, but we got red poles and house finches, a bazillion of them. Somebody must have been throwing seed down on the roadway, so we got lots of little birds. We went to the zoo, and our best bird there was a peregrine falcon sitting on the bridge. Right That's the right, side. yeah, the peregrine falcon, yeah. Yeah. And, and then after that, we went to Brookside, and that was... Uh, Kent's got quite a few things that you can go walk around the football field. He's got quite a few things there, so that was really fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the best part is that we had a real crew with us this year. Um, I'm one of the people who's been bird doing this, this is bird camp for a long time, and for many years it was just Tom and me just doing the whole nine yards. And this year we had six people, so that was really terrific. Yeah, it's kind of nice to be out with a, a, a small group. And yes, this year I've tried to be really, really careful in the size of groups and that uh, we wouldn't uh, be more than 10 because of the, you know, the COVID situation. I hope you noticed in the photographs people had masks on. 
people did try to stay, at least in my group, we tried to stay at least six feet apart. That's really hard sometimes when you're trying to show somebody a bird or you're looking in a certain place. But uh, I think everybody really, really uh, followed the, 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 the COVID safety protocols, and uh, which really was nice because um, National Audubon uh, it really was, was kind of concerned about uh, the Christmas bird count this year, maybe possibly even canceling all the Christmas counts. But uh, you know, I said, I said, you know, I, I think our groups can be maintain uh, group small enough that we can maintain the distance and be safe. Plus, again, I encouraged uh, some newer folks to just you know watch their bird feeder look around their neighborhood because things can be really, really wonderful. But, and, oh, and I appreciate all the photos that people sent in too. I, you know, we just couldn't use them all because there were just so many fabulous photos. All right, I think I'm going to pull up the um, our list, our Christmas bird count list. Hey Nancy, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Well, this is Sean Missick. Yes, you called on oh, me before, hey, and I don't think my connection went through or something. I don't know. Um, but real quick, I just wanted to say this was my first bird count. It was absolutely amazing. Um, Michelle did a wonderful job helping keep our group together. Uh, I met several new people, uh, like-minded individuals who are totally into birding so that's great for me um, and it was a great experience and being at the Rocky River Nature Center area I've been there many many times on my own but never in a capacity like this and it really brought the Nature Center to a whole new level for me and uh, will just further improve my birding skills and uh, also really just get me more experience with photography. So this was a great event, and uh, I look forward to doing it every year. Oh, that would be fantastic. Thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate that. You know, I, I try to really keep people informed. We try to, you know, get people, new people involved, too. I hope uh, this year um, we'll be able to get more people involved and hit more areas. Um, While we are waiting for that checklist to come up, um, we surpassed our highest number of species. Remember I said 80, 84? We got, we got 89 species this year. 89 species. And, and um, then there are, oh good, and there are some species that are considered count weak species and there were five count week species that are going to, going to be going on to the Audubon list but are, are going to be again listed as count week. So they are not listed as count day. I don't know if we can enlarge that. I'm sorry, what Marianne? We beat the east side this year. What about the east side? We did higher number of species than the east side. We did. Yes. It is a competition. You know, even though it's <laughs> not, but it is. I, I can't remember what the east side list, but you know, when they went over the east side list, the Cleveland Circle, it was, uh, it wasn't quite complete. I don't think they had gotten all of the list in that for that evening, so uh, I haven't seen the complete list for for Cleveland, but but you know this is the best ever, right? Betsy, can we make that a little larger? Can that be increased in size? My old eyes can barely see it. Are you able to expand your your view to a full desktop view? Uh. So full screen view. You should be able to see it fine. Then. Uh, 
Hi. I thought you were running this. Just because it's Betsy's screen, so I I can't I can't do anything with your screen. It's the freeconferencecall.com viewer that you want to make sure that it's expanded to full full view. This is as full as I think I can get. How about anyone else? I can see it fine. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna look well, um just to, to go over some real quick things. Um we had a lot of Canada geese, our our waterfowl were we're not too bad. Uh, tundra swans. We don't often get tundra swans. Um, luck luckily, we were able to get a couple of wood ducks. Um, the mallards. We normally get quite a few. Um, our, the pintail is a count week species as well as the canvasback. I was a little surprised about the, the duck called the canvasback because normally there's a lot of them out on Lake Erie. But they were they were a, a, a count weak species. Only one duck called the redhead. And normally we get lots of those too. Um, the harlequin duck is there. Um, the scoter, surf scoter, white wing scoter, and black scoter. Those are got all three of the scoter. So again, those are ducks. So if you're not familiar with them. Again, go through your field guides or or websites. Um, quite a few common golden eye. We got all three species of mergansers, hooded, common, and red-breasted merganser. And normally we don't get ruddy a whole lot of ruddy ducks. We got a, a couple of ruddy ducks. Um, wild turkey, a few, but not a new species, but one that has not been seen since the early 80s. A ring neck pheasant, and that was sighted around the the airport. So some of the uh, aerospace companies that have you know landscaping, it's kind of open. There's a ring neck pheasant there. That was awesome. Um, a couple of water birds called grebes. Lots and lots of horned grebes were 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 seen this year. I believe the number is 30. Yep. And Rock pigeons, well, pigeons, yep, they're there. But uh, this year, morning doves uh, outnumbered the rock pigeons. Yay! Uh, only one American coot was seen. Um, again, normally the numbers are a little higher. Uh, no cranes, no shorebirds this year. Our gulls. Nothing super ordinary. Again, the black-headed gull, that visitor from Europe, was was the awesome uh, gull species. But you know, Bonaparte's gulls were in good numbers. Uh, boy, it's hard to read the ring-billed gull number. It's like 30, 32,000 something like ring-billed gulls. Yeah. So again, ring-billed gulls, herring gulls. A lesser black-backed gull was, was sighted uh, during count week, which is nice. Common loons were seen. A, a good number of cormorants as well. Very few great blue herons. And um, I, I, I don't understand that. I usually we get way more great blue herons of only three. But again, the black vulture, yay, along with Again, the number of turkey vultures, 20, uh, again, it looks like these are 27 turkey vultures. That's a lot. That's a lot. Now, again, since the, since the birds do float around quite a few places, there's a good up chance that, yes, maybe a couple of them were counted and, and, and on a couple different routes. With the uh, raptors, the hawks, uh, we got every single one of the hawks listed. Um, the harrier was sighted during count week, but sharp shinned coopers, bald eagles, red shouldered, red tail, and rough legged hawks were all were all seen on the count day. 
the owls, of course, I showed you the screech owl in the hole, right? You saw it in the hole, and the great horned and the barred owl. Surprisingly, only one kingfisher reported. Normally we get quite a few, especially along Rocky River and some of those streams and stuff, and they were not frozen this year, so don't know where those kingfishers went. Um, we got all of the woodpeckers, everything from red-headed and yellow-bellied sapsucker to uh, red-bellied, downy, hairy, uh, flicker, uh, pileated, all, all woodpeckers. Yay! I like when we, get, when we hit all of them. Similarly with all the falcons, uh, the American kestrel, a good number of kestrels, a couple of merlins, and a uh, peregrine falcon, of course, as Marianne mentioned, the one at the zoo, and there were a couple of others. Blue jays, very good numbers. American crows are beginning to come back in number. They were hit hard years ago by the West Nile virus, and their numbers just have not been in great numbers, uh, at least up here in northern Ohio. You go around um, the Cuyahoga Valley and, and uh, Akron area, and their numbers are much higher. So American crow numbers, still good. Horned lark, that's a good sighting. And again, those are around the airport area where you have those open fields around the airport. That's what horned lark's like. Of course, the chickadees and titmice. Nuthatches, including red-breasted nuthatch. Boy, they had, we had a big influx of red-breasted nuthatches er, uh, in the late fall and early winter, and then they kind of disappeared. But we were able to scrape up a, a, a few of them on, on our routes, which is wonderful. Brown creepers, that's a hard one to find. So we had brown creeper. Carolina wren numbers are, are up, so that's wonderful. Oh darn, we didn't get the winter wrens. They're really hard to find. Uh, golden and ruby crowned kinglet. Normally we get golden crowned kinglets, and this year ruby crowns were the ones that were cited more. Go figure. Again, you just never know. Uh, as far as the, the um, uh, thrushes, eastern bluebirds, not too bad in numbers. Robin numbers were a little lower. Uh, I know there's a lot of them feeding on the fruits and stuff, but um, they, some of them may have traveled even a little further south. Just said, ah, uh, it's a little too snowy for us here. Mockingbird numbers good. Starlings, always too many starlings. Uh, one cedar waxwing. One. How often do you get one cedar waxwing? Not to vary, but somebody had one. That's great. Um, house sparrows, lots of those too. The winter finches, um, so no evening grow speaks for us, which is it's okay. But um, house finch, we're good. Purple finch, we're seen during count week. Um, common red pole, photos and numbers there, that's good. I think there's 13, yep, as well as 13 pine siskin. And then, of course, the American goldfinch. I'm going to scroll down to the next. There we go. So on the second page, Lapland longspur, which is, again, another open field bird were sighted near the airport. There's that field sparrow right there. That's awesome. Um, American tree sparrow, junco, white-throated song, and, and swamp sparrow. All good. The blackbirds, their numbers were down a little bit. We did have red-winged blackbird and cowbird. Uh, Yellow-rumped warbler was a, a, was a nice sighting. And, uh, and of course, cardinals. So, oh, uh, and then the other species not, not uh, listed, uh, the cackling goose, which I mentioned before, we actually saw a photo that Anna had taken along the lake. Mentioned the black-headed gull. And guess what? Along the airport a meadowlark. They like, again, those open areas. And I believe, looking back at the records, the last meadowlark that was seen was in the late 70s. So 
So 89 species with 31,000 some individual birds. And I counted every single one. No, I didn't. But really, the li a list like this is, I I'm so thankful for all the participants for being out there and doing the wonderful job of finding, um, d d again, d made it just wonderful. So now my next job, again, is to get all this stuff compiled into the National Audubon Database. Alrighty. So uh, if you do want to look at some of the information, um, you can look at the National Audubon Christmas Bird Count site um, and just, you know, see what other organization or what other circles had information uh, on and um, you know the science behind it all the, the things that are, are that people look at to see how all this data pulled together uh, will help um, us figure out how you know the, the movement of birds what's what's here now why is this species not here any longer so so again, this data is, is being used and mined. All right, let's have our last couple of slides real quickly. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Again, I love this shot. First of all, it shows, again, the dedication of the birders and along the lake, and it has a great shot of, again, downtown Cleveland. So I just want to say one thing about that one. Yes. This so, is Paula talking. Yeah. I got on here. Um, That's the, um, the person that took the picture was just a passerby that had sort of, she was walking her dog and she took the picture and we didn't even know it. And there was a big connection with Anna. Anna asked her what the dog's name, it was a Russian name. And all of a sudden they're talking Russian oh. right there. That's all. Oh, oh no, that, that's a wonderful story. I love hearing about that. I, I knew it was taken by a passerby, but I didn't know the little the little side uh, uh, tail. Yeah. That well, oh, oh, wonderful. Ah, but this is a. I, I love this shot. It's great. Um, I think it should be on the National Audubon Christmas <laughs> Bird Count. This should be the centerfold. Which well, they don't have. Share it with David Lindo. Yeah, should do that. That would be a great idea. Thank you. And then our, our I think our, one of our final slides is I love this one. It's kind of like called the end. Yeah, Michelle took this one as the I guess the geese were just walking along the all-purpose trail, and I just I just love the way it looks. So I want to thank again. I want to thank everybody for their participation. It cannot be done without all of your dedication. And uh, again, I know the weather was good and the birds were good, but really it's, it's the people that make, the, that make the event. And we so wish we could get together and would have had been able to have dinner or, or at least, you know, a cup of coffee at the very end of the day. But you know what? You're, hopefully you're comfortable in your house this evening and and uh, again thank everybody for your photographs for your time for your efforts and we hope to see you out there on the tra trails maybe doing the virtual field trip for the month of January which is the Ohio and Erie Canal Reservation and uh, and I want to just again thank everybody join us for our programs at Western Cuyahoga Audubon and please consider becoming a member. This is, this is how we continue to offer things like this, as well as programs, virtual field trips, book reviews, and so much other. Thank you, and have a good evening, everyone.